Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining um, for a community support session. My name is Haley and I work at Modern Health. We typically partner with companies to offer comprehensive mental health benefits to their employees, but today we're really excited to offer this free community session to both users and non-users alike. So thank you so much for joining us. We also have Peter here from Modern Health and he's gonna be helping answer questions, so you might see his name come up in the chat as well. Um, first up, I wanna just go over a few housekeeping things. Um, we welcome questions and comments and anything throughout the whole conversation. So to ask a question, please use the chat box or the Q&A feature. And Peter and I will be answering some in the chat box and then bringing some up live with Lila as well. We'll also be recording the session and sending it out to all registered attendees. So you'll be able to follow up on it afterwards as well. So now that we've got that out of the way, I wanted to introduce our wonderful ICF certified coach, uh, Lila Scar. She specializes in life challenges and is gonna be leading today's conversation around managing loneliness and isolation during this difficult time. So Lila, you can take it away. Hi everybody, thank you so much for being here. I was hoping to share also um, myself on video, but for some reason, Zoom is not allowing me to do that right now. But um, the most important thing is um, that I can talk to you all and that we can um, share some ideas and just brainstorm together and have this um, conversation today. So I'm really thankful that you're all here. Um, and I'd love to just start out by leading a brief meditation, um, if that's all right. So um, if everyone can either close your eyes or um, just rest your eyes gently on something in front of you and just really feeling your feet on the ground and taking a deep breath. We're just gonna take a couple of deep breaths together. And then if you would picture yourself um, in a forest today. And this forest is going to represent these last few weeks. And one reason a forest can be scary is because all we see sometimes in a forest are the trees in front of us, right? So we're not quite sure what's around the bend and we're not quite sure how large the forest is sometimes. And now if you will, continuing to breathe, just kind of feeling places in your body where you may have tension and asking yourself to let go of those a little and looking around in that forest, picture a path. And we're going to walk on that path and that path is going to take us up, up to the top of a hill. And still breathing, looking around from the top of that hill now. Notice what you see around you. There might be ocean, there might be a city. Notice what the sky is doing. Notice what the weather is like and how the air might feel on your face. And now looking down from your vantage point at the top of this hill, just noticing where that forest is now and the way that it is connected to all of the other pieces that you're seeing of your surroundings, the way that it meets the sky and the way that it meets whatever is nearby. And now you can sort of see that the forest is really one part of a much bigger picture. 
And just a couple of deep breaths here. And opening your eyes when you feel ready. And I really would love any feedback or insights um, as to that meditation, if, if anybody has comments. Um, please go ahead and use the chat to add those. All right, so I think Peter um, is going to help me with um, just kind of moderating comments uh, as I go here, so I go, don't get too overwhelmed with my slides and, um, and the chat, but I'll also try and keep my eyes out. And I will go ahead and move forward if everyone's ready. Looks like we're getting a lot of comments that people feel very relaxed after that and needed a moment to breathe. Excellent. Glad to hear that. And we just want to have this disclaimer for everyone. Um, uh, we are excited to offer this webinar, but of course, should you uh, need uh, more professional treatment. This should not serve as a substitute for that. And we encourage to contact for you for you to contact your healthcare provider for clinical needs um, and certainly never disregard professional mental health advice or delay seeking it because of this, uh, of, of something you have heard in this webinar. So really the goal of this conversation is to normalize uh, the discomfort, first of all, that can come with feelings of loneliness and isolation. Also to expand our toolbox of coping with those feelings and to answer questions and share ideas. So this is really a conversation and a chance to lift each other up by brainstorming together. So please do feel free to chime in via the chat if and when things come up for you, you have ideas, um, comments, questions, any of that stuff, and um, we'll try to address those as much as possible. And um, this is really a community um, event. Okay. So first of all, feelings of loneliness and discomfort are normal and much of the time actually they are the first step in the learning process so it's really important to recognize that um, that one of the first cues that we have that really tells us um, that we need to change our attitude or our behavior is actually discomfort and the thing that we don't want to get stuck in is that cycle of being uncomfortable because we're uncomfortable and what I mean by that is um, just that we can sometimes cause ourselves discomfort because we think that there's something wrong with us for having it. So really practicing mindfulness in terms of accepting the discomfort or the loneliness as normal in our own process so that we don't ca get caught in that loop. Um, and sometimes this might be something that we can't just get over or think away um so in that case we just go to managing it right and i like to think of it like pruning so when things come up for me i'm feeling uncomfortable or i'm feeling anxious um, learning to recognize that and acknowledge that as part of my process and then how to prune it back to um so that it doesn't become unhealthy or overwhelming Naturally, with um, all of this happening around COVID-19, um, many of these feelings are increased for people. So also just thinking about we're all in the same boat that way. And um, again, these feelings are totally normal. So let's focus on 
steps for overcoming or managing those feelings. So number one is just um, very simple, getting in touch with family and friends. Video, phone, um, any way that um, you can reach out right now, it's important, especially um, with what we're all facing. So if you're anything like me, you might have a long list of old friends or family that you actually haven't talked to in a long time. And um, this is really a great time to pursue those connections. I just spoke to um, a friend who I haven't spoken to in probably a year on the phone and it just felt so good to connect and to talk about um, what we're both going through right now. It's really a great time to pursue those connections. Um, and I'm also kind of curious how people are feeling about social media right now. Um, it seems like it can be really positive um, in some ways and also um, it can ramp up anxieties in other ways and really thinking about um, how different content affects you and how different content affects other people as far as posting. Does anyone have any ideas or comments about that? We have someone saying social media is a mixed bag, so it's an overload. Someone else is trying to stay off it because it stresses them out. Mm -hmm. A lot of increasing anxiety or all over the place. But also sometimes good for solidarity. Too politicized. Mm -hmm. People posting incorrect info. It stresses me out, but on occasion gives me a good laugh. So I think the main themes are a lot of it can be anxiety inducing, but also give some solidarity. Yeah, and that's kind of um, what I've been hearing too, just talking to friends and family of mine about it as well. And, you know, especially in times like this, I feel like um, it's so important for us all if we can all really think about um, what kinds of things we decide to post and what kind of reaction those things might incite from other people. Are they things that will make other people just more anxious? Are they things that will make people laugh or, um, or help in some way or feel help? Um, just really, I feel like if everybody can think about a little bit more about um, how we're affecting other people when we're posting, then maybe we can all benefit from that too. So, um, and knowing just personally, knowing when a good time is to sort of shut that stuff off and just get in touch with our family and our friends in a more intimate way too. All those are good comments, thank you. Lila, we also have a question in regards to this about how we can ask or encourage our family and friends to check in on us as well, especially for people who live alone. It's so like how you frame that ask. Yeah, that's a really great, great question. Um, and, you know, often I think that really the first step in creating intimacy um, is, is being comfortable asking for help, right? So, um, a lot of times people may not reach out because um, they think that um, someone is going to misinterpret them reaching out and, and that that person might think that they're helpless or something. But if you can reach out yourself and just say, um, hey friends, hey family, I'm really feeling kind of alone right now does anyone want to connect? You are making yourself vulnerable. And at this point, I think a lot of other people are mirroring that feeling. And so if you can step into your own vulnerability a little bit, um, chances are they'll be very thankful that somebody was able to do that and they will also step into their vulnerability. So it's, it's you're helping somebody by asking for help often. 
that makes sense. Any other questions or comments on that? We've got another question about um, someone who lives alone. They feel very isolated. How can they set goals to keep themselves motivated? Mm, good, good question. So um, goals for keeping yourself motivated, I like to think of it in terms of, um, you may want to make a schedule for yourself um, so that your day doesn't feel quite so I know that a lot of us are feeling like suddenly our day has no shape to it, especially if we're not going out to work anymore um, and we need to stay inside. So really making a schedule for yourself. Um, also, you may, that schedule may include things like a phone call, things like a video chat with family. Um, there are lists that you can make in terms of um, projects you maybe haven't got to yet that you would like to. So I was just um, speaking to my daughter actually about spring break coming up and of course all of our spring break plans are canceled now. So um, we were talking about making, what, what do we normally do um, at home and how do we make that feel different now? Um, so things that we don't usually get to, like maybe baking some bread or a craft project or um, some different structured things throughout the day that can give our day shape. And that sort of brings me to um, the, the next pointer, which is the walk and talk. So this is one way you can kind of get yourself outside of your house. Um, I know that a lot of counties in California right now are on lockdown, um, but so far we're still allowed to go outside for walking or hiking as long as we can keep at least six feet of distance between ourselves and other people. So um, there's been a lot of research on the connection between nature and mental health and studies show that spending time in the natural world really helps relieve stress and depression and it helps with overall life outlook um, and vitamin D which comes from the Sun is actually great for maintaining healthy immune function cardio is great for keeping your lungs healthy especially important right now um, and connecting with a friend on the phone so just the good old-fashioned phone call I like to plug in my earbuds and take a walk um, on a sunny day or even in the rain and just talk to a friend on the phone while I'm walking. And, and um, that's a really good one for giving your day shape again, getting some fresh air and feeling connected. Any comments or questions on that one? There's some agreement that it's really helpful to get outside. Excellent. Okay, and so the other thing I wanted to talk about is neighborhood support. Um, having that sense of community is so important and especially for those of us who live alone too. Um, and in times like this, so there are likely people in your neighborhood that may need a little bit of extra support that live alone or maybe they're elderly um, and it's really really good to of course it's important to remember to keep at least six feet of distance but you can still talk with your neighbors you can um, take a walk around your block and shout over your fence you can say hi to someone on the street um, and ask um, ask your neighbors, what do you need? Because chances are that somebody will need something and it's always good to know um, what resources you all have in your neighborhood, right? So if you run out of something, maybe your neighbor will have it. And if they're out of something, maybe, um, maybe you can, and you're going to the store, 
maybe you can just pick up a couple of extra supplies for them. Always feels good to look out for each other and um, feel that there are people looking out for you. So connecting with your neighbors helps your neighborhood feel safer and, and helps you not feel alone. Are there any other ways um, that anyone here has connected with their neighborhood or their community lately? Somebody said that they have a Zoom happy hour tonight. That sounds fun. Oh, that's such a great idea. I love that. A couple people use Nextdoor to see what's going on in their community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nextdoor is a great resource. I had um, actually some neighbors uh, who I was talking to that, that had had a cocktail hour with their neighbors sitting on opposite sides of their chain link fence together. <laughs> So they were sort of shouting back and forth. They were definitely more than six feet apart, but they were all sitting in their backyards having a cocktail. We also have someone who did a Zoom um, game night, virtual game night. Oh yeah, love that. Someone else had a neighbor who had to work in person. Um, so they help are helping to care for their child when scheduling is tough. Definitely a good um, way to support. And actually, I've been noticing a lot of um, a lot of my feed. I have a lot of um, performing artists on my feed that are out of work right now, um, and definitely a few of them are doing things like teaching. Uh, remote Pilates classes or um, offering things like um, like child care. There's one woman who's a storyteller and she's been um, available for Zoom storytelling to people's kids. Okay. We also have one question around um, neighbors and community. So someone had a question about suggestions for creating community with neighbors you've maybe never talked to before. Yeah, really good question. So um, a few different ways you can do that. Like I said, right now, most people are probably home. So just literally taking a walk around your block and seeing if there's anyone out, you can strike up a conversation. But another way that you can do it is just by writing a little note. Um, I actually witnessed somebody recently putting some flyers around um, just asking if their neighbors would like, would need help with anything and introducing themselves. So um, these are kind of unprecedented times and I think that people really appreciate um, personal ways that people reach out. Um, right now and I thought that was a really sweet way of connecting um, and of course things like next door are a great way to connect and meet new people on there too um, in a more virtual world so um, connecting with pets and plants uh, this might sound a little silly but really um, you know Getting outside, doing some gardening is great, but even if you don't have a yard that you can be in, um, I have found something as simple as repotting a house plant to really give me a change in perspective. There is something meditative in getting my hands in the dirt. Um, certainly playing with a cat or a dog, um, feeling the feeling of nurturing something other than yourself can actually be really beneficial. Um, and one woman that I talked to, she decided to get a bird feeder and really just so that she could watch the birds outside and she felt some company and some solace in, um, in her bird feeder. So I know these are simple things, but they can make a big difference. Are there any other ideas or input that people have around that one? 
We've got someone who started bird watching with their roommates. Oh, cool. Yeah, so another bird, bird watcher. Someone else is lucky and their coworker just adopted a puppy. Aw. Or other people who are fostering dogs. Ooh, someone found out that you can order live plants from Amazon this week. Oh, what a great idea. Yeah, I like that too. Fantastic. Someone else suggested if you're somewhere that's not on um, shelter in place now to go volunteer at an animal shelter if they're open still. Oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah, and again, um, maybe even, you know, looking at around, that's another thing that if you're outside, your neighbors, even if you don't have a dog, your neighbor might have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so just kind of feeling that community where you can and um and I love that Amazon is delivering live plants. That's such a great resource. Okay, so this last one is just um taking time for self-care and really this kind of circles back to um the concept of discomfort as a catalyst for learning and change. So um, it kind of reminds me of when my daughter was really little and she would get really bored sometimes and want to watch TV or uh, be entertained in other ways. And, and sometimes I would say yes, but sometimes I would say, no, you got to just entertain yourself and figure it out. And I would kind of watch her going through these various stages of discomfort with that um, and some loneliness around that um, and in her boredom. And eventually what happened was she was able to push through that some and that's often when her most creative work happened. So it's kind of a good reminder um, to me, to all of us, sometimes when we just can't connect with other people um, to really just take that time for self-care, take a bath, journal, read a book, cook, um, because that aloneness feeling can sometimes be a, a really valuable opportunity for growth and self-exploration. So just kind of reminding, a reminder of that. Any comments or questions on that? We have someone who said they've been knitting and coloring and reorganizing and going through old photos. Oh yeah, old photos. I have so many old photos that I should be organizing. What a good idea. Someone's trying to eat really healthy right now. Yeah, also a good idea. Someone is also learning to play the ukulele from YouTube videos. Fantastic. There are so many good um, learning to play different instruments, videos, tutorials. Um, I've actually been really enjoying some of those too. There's also some people who are going to try and start meditation for the first time or again, going through clothes and cleaning out closets, puzzles. Yeah, I love those suggestions. Someone else mentioned that a lot of um, artists are doing Instagram concerts on their feed. So I guess John Legend did it today. Oh, great. Yeah, I also saw that um, the Seattle Symphony was doing uh, live, live concerts. And there are, I also noticed that there are um, many museums that are giving virtual tours of the museums. Someone else said, learn something new from online courses, doing some online yoga classes. Yeah, so these are really great opportunities to 
to dig a little deeper into those things that you always were curious about, you wanted to learn. And we've got one more follow-up question on this too. Um, someone asked, what can I do if I find that working is the only time my anxiety subsides? Do you have any tips or advice on you know, how to try to help find some of these hobbies or different activities? Well, um, you know, if, if you're noticing that work is really the only thing that is um, taking you away from your anxiety, it might be worth, um, you know, the reason that work would take you away for, from your anxiety is probably because it's distracting enough um, and it takes a high amount of concentration, right? So there are other activities that might be um, taking a high level of concentration too that might not be work. So it might be worth taking a look at what are some other activities, um, for instance, learning a new instrument or, um, or cooking. I have a friend who's been baking macaroons, which apparently takes a lot of um, focus and is very exacting. So things like that um, might be a good opportunity for something else that can help distract from that anxiety. But also um, remembering again that that anxiety is a normal part of the process too. And sometimes it's okay to have those feelings for a little while. Um, the other thing is there is definitely um, something to be said for knowing when to turn off the news. It's good to stay informed. Um, but sometimes turning off that news or that social media, if it's making you anxious, um, can be good too. Do you have any tips for, you know, best practices for cutting off work? I know, especially we have a question here you know, on what's the, the best way to cut work off, especially when it feels like you're nonstop online working and not able to cut off or take any breaks, um, especially in this work from home environment when, you know, it's tough to create that distance between work and home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's something that a lot of people are struggling with right now. And um, in general, even when you're um, at work in an office, it's really important to give yourself little, um, little short brain rest breaks. So there are two, sort of two pieces to this. One is um, trying to, throughout your workday, um, really take those those little short brain rest breaks. And studies have shown that it actually makes you a more efficient worker if you can do that. So even just a two minute um, uh, meditation, for instance, or turn off your screen, get away from your screen and stare out the window for a couple of minutes, or just closing your eyes and listening to your breathing. Some people like a guided meditation there are a lot of them on the Modern Health platform, but also tons of resources for guided meditations um, online through YouTube and some various other places. So um, really important to take those small breaks. And then in general, when working from home, it's, it's very important to set your work hours like you would at the office. Um, so, so if it takes setting an alarm um, or, or just a reminder that like, okay, I'm just going to, this is when I'm going to start work. This is when I'm going to stop work. Um, having a regular place in your house, that's your workplace too, if you can, even if it's just a corner in your kitchen, um, so that you can remove yourself then from that place is also really helpful for kind of separating that work and home life. But I do think it's really important that um, people set their hours and try and stick to stopping at a reasonable work, work stopping hour. We also had someone suggest blocking your calendar so that when you have a walk or a break schedule that you're maybe more likely to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I often ask my clients to literally schedule in those like 
um, between anywhere between two and 15 minute breaks um, throughout the day so that people don't end up um, filling up that time. And kind of the opposite of that, we have someone ask, uh, what do you do if you can't focus at all? Um, all of my coworkers who are used to being in the office can't get anything done at all. Someone else asks, um, uh, you know, what are some of the best ways that I can stay focused while working from home? I find uh, I've been finding it hard not to get distracted. Are there any good tips that can help, uh, you know, people find that focus um, while in this new uh, work from home environment? Yeah, so, so ways of finding that focus. Um, again, if there is even just a small corner in your home that you can really set up as your workspace and use that way, um, that can be very helpful. Um, other things that you can do are really to um, turn off the, the social media apps or the things that a lot of times that, that stuff pops up while we're working and can be very distracting. Um, keeping your phone on do not disturb if you can while you're working on your um, computer, um, things like that. I know that everyone has different, it's tricky because we all use our phones for work and for um, other stuff. So anywhere where you can kind of draw those boundaries and those lines and make them a little clearer will help with focus. But, um, and then, and then also in terms of focus, again, um, just taking a few minutes to just stop and breathe actually can help get you back inside yourself and um, also stimulate more focus rather than kind of feeling scattered and realizing that you need to do some dishes or something else needs to happen. So um, taking the, that time to just it and be still for a minute and then refocus. We also have a question um, for someone who feels like they're getting um, too many people checking in on them. And so they want to know if there's any kind of tips for um, feeling overwhelmed when people are checking in too much. Mm. Yeah, I'm curious um, what ways people are checking in, but um, you know, of course, if, if it's through social media or through, um, you know, messaging, we don't have to respond to all of those messages right away, although we don't want our friends and family to worry about us either. So one simple response would just be like, hey, I really appreciate your concern. Um, I am taking a little space to myself right now to just um, be a little bit more still since I have this opportunity. And, um, and thank you for checking in, but I'm going to be offline for a bit. And I find that um, posting that in a way where, where um, my friends and family can see it, if it's a group email or, a, um, or on social media can be helpful. And, and people will back off a little bit. Any other questions? We've got another good question. Do you have any tips for how to keep yourself accountable to a routine? So in the case where you do set that routine, you have a good uh, setup and you've you know invested the time to uh, create uh, create some semblance of a routine in the new work from home situation. How are some, you know, tactics, what are some tactics that you have uh, to keep yourself accountable to that? Um, well, tactics for keeping myself accountable to routine. Um, I would say that uh, it depends on whether you're living alone or with other people. It's a little bit easier to be accountable if you have somebody that you're living with who can help you out that way. So, um, you know, I have, for instance, uh, I have told my daughter that um, I want to take a walk every day. So I have her there. I, 
even just telling her that um, is holding me more accountable to doing that. And um, she's agreed to come with me, so even better. Um, but other ways you can hold yourself accountable are obviously you can reach out to your community online, ask people to help hold you accountable to certain things eating well, exercising regularly, you can make reminders for each other. Again, using your own calendar to really schedule things. Um, I find that even if I know I'm going to take a walk, if I can put that walk in my schedule, um, then I'm more likely to do it because my little reminder pops up on my Google calendar and says walk. So um, those things help. Also, often tying one activity to another can really help. So if I'm trying to, um, if I'm trying to take that walk and I can tie it to um, a certain, for instance, I like to work on my modern health stuff at uh, after lunchtime when I'm building these types of programs. So if I can take my walk and then eat my lunch and then work on my programs, then I have all of those three things are really tied to each other and become my routine. They help each other out that way. That's awesome. And we have some, you know, great crowdsource feedback too, or suggestions around uh, writing some tasks down, use a dry erase board marker or dry erase board calendar, or even a, uh, a to-do list, you know, written down on pen and paper or virtually um, to monitor your progress and, and help hold yourself accountable that way. Yes. And I think monitoring progress is a really great one because if I can look on um, my calendar and see things checked off, then I can be proud of myself and see my own progress right and and the more that you can see your own progress the more likely you are to continue so if i look at my calendar and i have you know six days in a row of taking my walk checked off that makes me feel good and it makes me feel more like taking my walk the next day we also have a question on any tips to manage working remotely with your spouse so I think for a lot of people, this is a new thing that they maybe are both working from home um, and they find that sometimes they're in work mode and their spouse wants to socialize. So figuring out how to kind of balance all of that. Yes, good one. <laughs> um, yeah, this is one that I'm working on with my spouse right now. So um, it, again, it takes some coordination as far as, um, and especially if you live in a smaller space um, or there are not lots of other rooms that you can go into. Um, you really need to be comfortable communicating with each other and coordinating um, what times um, different people need to do things. So I recommend sitting down with your calendars and talking over um, who needs what space, how much quiet do you need, um, may even have to do a little bit of rearranging um, or rethinking uh, what rooms we're using for what. Maybe, maybe one of the bedrooms needs to turn into an office space for a little while. Um, you could think of it similarly if you, you know, I don't know how many people here share a bathroom with more than one person, but <laughs> more than one person in our house needs to take a shower. So we have to coordinate how, who's gonna take the shower, how long it's gonna be sometimes when everybody has to, has places to be. So it's similar, but on a bigger scale now in terms of um, using space and really people need to, we all need to kind of be empathetic with each other and realize that, um, we're all trying to make this work, right? So communicating with your spouse about um, what's important when and prioritizing. You guys can sit down together, hopefully, and prioritize 
um, how to use the space. Someone had a great tip to set up lunch dates and walk breaks with their spouse. So that's like their social time and the rest of the time they can leave each other to their work. That's a great tip. And I think also it, um, it makes it so that we're not just feeling trapped in the house with our spouse all the time because that can be stressful too sometimes. So um, especially when we're trying to get our work done, there's somebody else in our face that we're not usual, used to having, having there. Um, it's good to remember, oh, we like spending time together. So having that lunch date or that walk is a sweet way to reinforce that. Anything else? I guess that's all with the questions. Okay. Well, I really appreciate um, everyone here and the opportunity to brainstorm and some great ideas came up today. Um, and I really hope this has been helpful for people and please continue to be kind to each other and, and share ideas. This is a great opportunity to just be creative um together with our community and um keep brainstorming so thank you and as a reminder we have a whole series of conversations this week and you can see a full schedule on our blog post or our linkedin tomorrow we have one on maintaining healthy lifestyles during stressful times and that's going to be from 10 to 11 pt All right, well, thank you all so much for attending and thank you, Lila. And you guys will all see a pop-up um, for feedback once we sign off. Um, so if you have anything you'd like to share with us, we'd much appreciate it. And we'll also follow up with an email. Hope to see you guys all for the rest of our uh, conversations as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Stay safe and healthy and communicating. Take care. <laughs>